every city has that one barbershop that is a staple of the community. A place that combines a great cut with an even better customer experience. For Brea, California, that barbershop is Straight Up Barbershop. Since opening its doors in 2006, Straight Up has built a loyal clientele that keeps the shop packed all week. We wanted to sit down with shop owner Stacy and ask him a few questions. It turned into less of an interview and more of an honest conversation about his philosophies on barbering, his journey, and what makes the shop so successful. Here are some of the highlights. Okay, I grew up in uh, Tustin, Tustin, California, and uh, I went to school, pretty much went through my junior year, and uh, actually I went to Tustin until my sophomore year, went up to school up north with my uncle, came back and just, you know, knew school wasn't for me, and, uh, but I needed to get into something, so at 17 I joined the service. And uh, my mom signed her name on the line, and I joined the service, and uh, I uh, did three years of that. And, and every year, every year, they hit you with the reenlistment briefing. You know, what do you, do you want to come back? And I always knew I was going to end up in a shop. Uh, my mom started cutting hair um, when I was probably in early grade school. She was an old school uh, restaurant waitress by trade, and it was just her and I that grew up together. And uh, she met my dad, or who I called my dad, who came around about, I was about 15. He, uh, she met him in a barbershop down in uh, Capistrano Beach. So my mom drove a 68 Volkswagen to that barbershop down there. My mom was a barber, not a hairstylist. She uh, drove to that shop and back in a 68 Volkswagen and met this, this guy in the shop and uh, they ended up getting married. and. And my stepdad's a very interesting story in the barber business as well. He, uh, him and his brother went to barber college in Ohio. And uh, they were two brothers that decided to do a trade and they actually came out together as like 18 year olds when California was a baby and took advantage of California growing. So they had barber shops that were open till like midnight because people were working around the clock. So, so I've been eating bubble gum in a shop my, pretty much my whole life. So that needs to say, that's how you were introduced into the industry. I was, and it wasn't that I was going to pick it as a trade. I just, it's what my family did. It's what my mom did. Um, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the, the smarts or whatever you call it to get in the lifeguard line back then, which I think I would have done a hell of a job there, but I knew I needed to get into something. And even at my reenlistment briefings in the service, they go, okay, you're not going to reenlist. What are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm probably going to cut hair. And uh, that's, that's, so I got out of the service at 20 years old and uh, I actually uh, opened a landscaping business with a friend of mine, really, that was a real quick deal on that. We bought some lawn routes off of his grandpa, an old Dutch guy that had routes out in Bellflower. And we did that and it was very successful, but we weren't good partners. So I told my parents, I said, hey, I got the truck or rather I got the equipment, now I need a truck. And my parents were like, we're just not comfortable endorsing you because we don't know about that business. Okay, and they knew, they, knew barbering. they knew barbering. So if you want to do this, so there I was, I got into barber school and right. actually went to the same barber school that my mom went to. So it was still going, Roston. Roston, is that out in, uh, in uh, Burrito Valley? No, it was Anaheim. There were two of them. Yeah, Roston out here? Yeah, oh. Roston was on Lincoln and I forget the cross street there, and the the one I went to was on uh, uh, Brookhurst and Broadway. Okay. Yeah, Roston got involved. If I'm not mistaken, there was a barber college called Royal. It's Immaculate. I know one. I think there's a Royal out here too, and my mom went to Roston, so I was born in '67. So my mom went to barber school in the 70s, which you got to remember then that here's this styling thing coming. People are growing their hair. So Roston trying to still do barbering, but get on board with what's going on, not losing those people. They did implement different ways of cutting hair in that too. But, but Roston was a barber college.
So I can go back 30 years myself. So I can, I can go back to 1990. All right. Well, let, so, okay, well, I guess we'll just go. We'll say that since since the early 2000s, by the boom. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'd almost like to talk about the later real quick, and I'll tell you why. Because barbershops actually, my dad was always the cheapest in town, but that didn't mean that he didn't do quality haircuts because he didn't have barbers work for him that couldn't cut good hair. And back then, if you and if you couldn't do a flat top, you were not, you couldn't work in a shop because he wasn't going to have somebody not know how to do something and cause that waiting, you know, because he had big shops. So, and the reason why I, I want to go back this far is, is so during that time of cut rate barbering, didn't mean you had to, just because my dad was the cheapest in town didn't mean you didn't, he didn't do good work because he had a clientele that was all over the spectrum. So, and the other reason I want to go back is when I got into it in 90, I had to recover from that because barbers, barbering, barber shops actually got a bad name because there were a lot of people that got into barbering because they didn't pick anything else. So you had a lot of barbers behind the chair that did it because it's a short school, they got a license, I got a job. So if somebody doesn't like what they do, that's gonna reflect in the work they do. And I had to recover from that. And I can honestly say, I've never met Donnie Holly, but the time that we did it, I'm probably older than him and probably started before him, not to get kudos, because that's not what I'm about, but it really was that time. And I remember seeing his business card and I thought, awesome, somebody trying to put it, go forward with this thing. To take it and- To and make it to better. Right, right. Yes. Okay. So I remember seeing that and going, sweet, I'm not alone. Because when the competition was even around then, I'm like, because there were shops opening around me that were trying to cut me down. And I was like, you know what? No, I can't do it. I'm going to extend the hours. I'm going to bring back latherizers. I'm going to do these things called shave fades, which I can honestly say I was a part of the beginning of that because that haircut was just an idea. We were doing zero haircuts all day, and I'm like, how can I be different than the next guy? Take that haircut closer. I went out. I bought brawn razors. My barbers had never done it before. And we, we went from the triple lot to the shave fade. Charged a couple more bucks for it because you put a little more juice in that haircut, put some lather around the bottom, and it's and it became something they had to have. Once they got it that close, they had to have it that way. What, what year was, was this? What was it Probably 2000. Okay. Just, yeah, I had bought my parents out in 2000, changed the name to Straight Up, and that's when. That's when our old barber supply, who still delivers to us, who delivered to my parents, I said, can we still get latherizers? Yeah, so he brought these things back and we started. So that's when, that's when you see a shift in that's the where, whole industry. That's where it started. And then I came up here in 2006 and it still wasn't, there wasn't a boom yet. Right. Not in 2000, might have, might have barely gotten started. A couple of kids around here, customers were like, and I remember it happening. Customers, I got two, I've had two barbers in here that got the idea of barbering by coming in here. And these guys were going, hey, you know, it's kind of cool what they're doing. Here's a trade, you know, how do you get into this thing? Sure. So if that was 2006, 2007, it's really, you know, it's gotta be 2008, you know, 2010 that it really got going, right? Nine, something like that right, right. is when it really got going. I, I like looking for someone who likes what they do, you know, um, you don't know anybody's ability until they plug in. So but I've always thought, and my dad taught me this, I've always thought of, why don't you come in on a, you know, we got a day that we're missing a guy or something, or someone can cut loose, or why don't you plug in for a couple hours and we'll check each other out, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm looking for someone who wants to, who wants to get here on time. This is, these are my, this is what I look for in a barber. This is what I tell them. I need you to be here on time. I need you to stay till we're done. I need you to take care of the customer. I want you to make as much money as you can. And I want you to take as much time off as you can afford. That's my pitch to all of them. And I want you to completely be yourself as long as 
it's benefiting the shop. I don't want six, you know, six robots. You know, when these guys can be themselves and they're loot, that's when they can work hard and that's when they're most comfortable. This place becomes a lot more interesting, you know, as long as it's not detrimental to the shop. We got to curve that conversation around the mom that comes in. Got to have a little bit of style, like maybe it's one of the barber's moms walking in or their little girl. You know, you got to have that kind of stuff in mind. So when you ask what I'm looking for, I, I you know, they got to be, they got to be skilled. You have to be able to cut hair, you know. You can only get by with so much on personality and, and that, you know, you can sell a chair for a while on that, but you do need to be able to cut hair too. I was brought up and, and the independent contractor for me is really to keep my prices fair is the only way that I would do it um, because it, it allows me to keep the, you know, I'm not taking care of the insurance and taking care of those things. Um, but I do know that it's going that way, you know? And so um, I've been told that each guy just getting a city license is gonna be one of the ways. And that kind of works to me because, I mean, my shop license is probably $50 a year. Something ridiculous, you know, what it's gonna cost you. So to have to buy a license once, you know, once a year, but yeah, it's, uh, all that kind of stuff is getting up to speed, so that is very new, and, and I'm kind of figuring that stuff out right now. Yeah, it's almost like they're forcing uh, the traditional barber shop to operate in the way of the franchise. Same with tattoo shops, though. It's like it's hitting. Right. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's all that kind of independent stuff, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's kind of, I mean, I don't know. It's California, I guess. That's, yeah. That's the only thing you can say about it. I'm just glad we're not in it alone, because it it's the guy with the lawn routes that's got guys running on lawns all day. It's the, right. the guy that has the pool company that's got 10 guys out cleaning pools. So it's, it's something to be figured out for sure, you know. Three days a week. Still? I just, just started, my kids are getting older, so that window's open up again, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're older, so I'm, I'm connected again for where, sure. Where do you go, where do you spot? I surf down south a lot. Uh, I like it down there because it's, it's it the crowd's less it's it uh, I've been surfing a place called old Vans, which and I'm just learning that there's a culture there you know that uh, I've been told that's the Waikiki of California and the vibe is there so I like it it, it feels like a it, it feels like you've gotten away even in a two-hour session there in the morning so it's pretty yeah. cool well I lived in Europe for two and a half years so I I really I really liked it over there I'm Definitely partial to German. That food and, and beer is second to none. So you did I did. Was that after the service? That was in the service. Oh, okay. in the service. Okay. Yeah. All right. How, how, how often do you go back there? You know what? I've uh, I've only been back once. You know, I got kids. So once you have those kids, sure. but I did go back to get my two girls. So I adopted two girls from Belarus. She's going to be 19. So 16 years ago, this last Father's Day, we went and and uh, adopted two girls from Belarus. So I was able to lay over in Germany and show my wife where I spent from 18 to 20 years old. So I kind of got to do that. And then we went over to, uh, to uh, Belarus and then we, we found Poland on the way out. And we had to go to Warsaw to, uh, to go to the American embassy there and then uh, came home, so. Did it bring back old memories to be? Oh, it did. Yeah. It, you know what it did because I mean, we all know 17 to 20, right? That's either going to be high school. I mean, that's a, that's a window of time that's small now when you're older, but it's big when you're younger. So when I took her there, it, was, it wasn't like taking her to my old, my old town where I grew up, where I went through you know, all the school, but I definitely had a special place for those years over there that I got to take her to. So I got to take her to the, uh, the castle behind where I lived to a beer garden and have an awesome meal and show her that, so it was cool. I'm, like, you know what? Yourself. You're not, like, you, don't, you might not I don't it. use it. Right, right, right. Not a, it's not that I'm not big. I, I'm a dinosaur and don't use it. Okay. And, I, and I'm, we have, you know, my guy here, Gabe, has, we have found a place for it to get to our guys. Holiday hours that are going to change. I mean, even shout outs. Thank you. Have a great holiday. Thanks for you guys hanging out and waiting. 
Right. We knew it was crazy. Um, so you're a barber that's not motivated by social media. I have, I have built, I have yeah. not built, I have built two shops from scratch without using any social media at all. I have gone out and talked to people like I was running for office. If I'm standing there, I'd rather, I'd rather work than not. If, if two guys come in and one guy can afford a haircut and I'm building a store and I, can, and I got time to put that guy in my chair, that's an investment. That's how I do it. That's how I've done it. You know, I like to give away stuff to the community. I like to do things like that. You know, that's how I like to, to spread a vibe. You know, I've just had to go out and, and fight for it by hand. So, and that's, and again, it's, it's, there's, there's things I should learn about social media before it's all out because I think there's a place for it. But I also think that you lose a lot of realness in it too. You know, you could profess to be anything on there. You know, um, you want to see good haircuts, walk into a store and walk behind a barber. So as far as tools go, I'm on the same stuff that I started with. Which would be? Sergeant shears, 4420s. You can sharpen them and sharpen them again. You can cut dry hair with them. I've had the $200 Joels. I'm not saying there's not a place for it, but it's where you cut the hair, not what you cut it with. You know, that stuff is, that stuff has been reliable equipment for me. The Oster, the 76, that's my clipper. And there was a time when they, when they flipped the switch from the toggle to the little push button. I didn't like that. That became a pain in the butt there. Um, but to me, the wall has still been, you know, the senior has still been my go-to on that. I do have a five star now. I like the angle on that. But that gray Andis to me is, it's, it's done the test of time. The master? Uh, the, the gray, the T, out, the T outliner, yeah. I never used the master. Uh, my dad did. I know when you open it up, there's a one and a half there, so it goes places. The other ones don't. And it's a super reliable, good clipper. I just never used it in my hand and got used to it. You know, I just never uh, did that. But um, yeah, the only thing that I've seen change in that stuff that I don't like is, and this is in all honesty, and I went through it today. When my supply guy came in and I needed a wall blade and I got a wall blade and I cut it out of the package and put it on my clipper, and this goes for the T outliner too, on a Saturday when I had people all over, I could put that blade on, tighten two screws, put a, put a bead of oil on that thing and fire away. It's not like that now. It is so, did I get a good blade or not? Right. It is, th th and that is a bummer because you've got to play with that until you get back to what it's doing instead of just firing away. It, the mechanics of barbering are the recipes and the blades and the things you pick that make the next thing erase the next thing and stuff like that too. I'm not saying there isn't fanning and a lot of freehand because there is. But that mechanical stuff is what you rely on those tools to do to the next blade that you put on and those kind of things there too. So, you know, and everybody's got the recipes of what they do, of what takes what out, you know, so. Um, I opened this shop in uh, 2006. I had had a shop down in Stanton. I moved to Brea. Uh, I opened my first shop with my dad in 1990, but getting back to the Brea store, I had that store when I opened up here in 2006. I moved in, in, the, in the neighborhood probably, I don't know, six years, so probably 2000, and always wanted to, to market my own town, you know, live and work in the same town. And it took me a long time to find a spot, and I finally found this spot. And uh, yeah, so that's how I landed here. A buddy of mine's wife found this place uh, on the way back from a poker party. She told you about it, that's what you I, acquired? I looked in here at that time, we were on the one side. It was 550 square feet, I came from 1,000 square feet and I was like, how am I gonna do this? But I couldn't find anything else and I just, I looked at the thing and went, you know what? Take everything out of here but the walls, make it a box. I don't want anything in here. And we shoved four chairs in here, and, and uh, there was no break room and, or anything like that. We ate with our customers, and uh, 
And, uh, you know, that's what we did. And we were blessed enough to honestly be busy pretty darn quick from the beginning. And uh, I was able to expand about three years ago. So. This is, and this is an interesting part. Yeah. You know, and, and Gabe's here too. You know, Gabe's got, Gabe's got more history than a lot of these young guys because he came in here with me. And so he's actually seen it full circle. And so, yeah. You know, was he threatened by it? Hell yeah. I was too. You know? Uh, all I could do was, was get up earlier and stay later and keep doing what we did day one and try to wear these guys out. I'm, and I'm being honest, you know? And these guys, you know, they wanted to change the price every year. I've been in this business a long time. Everybody's entitled to do what they do, and, and I get it. You can sell a $50 hamburger, do it all day. But where does that end up? Like, where's the top, well, you know, that's what scared me. So, yeah, I mean, I was threatened by it, but at the same time, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me from getting comfortable. Sure. Because I, I was the guy forever. You get someone down the street taking care of people, I gotta, I gotta continue to do that. So competition is actually good, and it's there anyways, so use it to your advantage. And again, my, we're bringing the same stuff we brought, and that's, that's been our hook. It's that same, that same recipe. You know what, my dad, honestly, my dad's slogan was, get a, get a good haircut at a fair price. I mean, and I think we're still doing that, that many years later, you know? And, uh, you know, we have to be busy doing what we're doing, you know? We can't be sitting around with what we're charging, but you know what, we got customers that come in every week, every week. So it's gotta be fair, you know? I got customers that, you know, they're in here all the time because they can afford to get cleaned up. So, you know, this is, getting taking care of yourself could be a luxury. So if you're priced right, you guys could both make out. I'm in it for the long haul. I have still the three of four of us right now from 2006. And the only reason the fourth one wasn't here is because he had some family issues and he needed some time. Otherwise, I'd still have him and I had him from Stanton. So I don't have turnover in barbers. Sure. My guys like working here, you know? My guys do, again, I want my guys to do, I love seeing my guys get things because that's what it's about. You know, I'm not here to, you know, to just kill it for me. This isn't, this isn't just for me. My biggest benefit in a shop owner is what I do on this chair. It's not from my guys. Granted, that helps cover overhead and there's some left over. But no, I, I you know, so, and, and my guys being happy and, and all, that's, that's why we're able to do what we do here is because, you know, that we, my guys don't leave. My guys do like what they do, you know? So I don't have, I don't have turnover, man. My guys leave because they want to open a shop or they've moved. You know, and uh, and that's a huge compliment to me. You know, and, and if they want to open the shop, what do you what do you what do you tell them? You know what's funny about that is, you hate to see anybody go. Business hates seeing anybody go. Sure. And if you've had a guy for a while, and he's going to open a shop, chances are he's one of your gems, and he's pretty sharp. But how could it's it's got to be the biggest compliment in the world too? And I know that they're going to go out there and put their own twist on it. But I also know that they're gonna keep a lot of what comes with me and the things I believe in and the things that have always worked and the way it should be, that are gonna help them do what they need to do. And that I feel really good about. You know, this trade, and I'm just gonna add this for scratch because I wanted to get this in there. I've been in this 30 years and this job, I didn't dream about doing it. I ended up doing it. I put my lifestyle around it. I created a place that I don't mind going to. If you're gonna work all day, you might as well have a place that you like going to. And then it's just, it's turned into, my job is turned into serving people. It honestly, when people sit in my chair, the haircut happens for sure. They come in here for the haircut, and if it wasn't for that, they wouldn't be in my chair, but all I'm doing is hanging out with people I enjoy anyways. And they're getting what they want, and I'm getting what I need, and it's just, 
you know, it, it, just a lot of, lot of relationship. And that's what it is. If I come in and get out of myself, I just come in and hang out with people all day. And that's awesome. Because serving people is super cool. And if I get my guys in on that, and we're all doing that, and that juju gets going around, that's when you have something. You don't have a bunch of individuals in their own world doing their own thing. You've got six of us in here, and that's why I create sitting that faces each other. I don't want people disconnected. Just because I'm not cutting someone's hair across the room, I still want to visit with them. I want all that stuff going around. I want the whole shop in on this thing. And that's what we do here. So any barber that's getting in the business, for the most part, especially nowadays, I know he's been going to shops. I know he's been getting cut. So I know he knows what looks good and what's right. That's what you need to give every person in your chair. Treat every person in your chair like you know them. Do that haircut like you have to look at it all night once you cut them loose. That you have to look at that at the family picnic on the weekend. You know? And that's what you need to do over and over again. Treat people how you want to be treated. Do the work that they want. Don't give someone the haircut you want to give them. It's like a burger joint. If a guy doesn't want pickles on it, perfect. You don't have to do that. And I can honestly swear that that has kept me busy for 30 years, is doing what the customer wants.